All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at scalar surface integrals. And so we've got a scalar function uh, z squared here um, that we are integrating over a surface s. And the surface consists of part of a sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. That lies on or above the plane z equals 1. So if you're not already given a graph of your surface, it's a good idea to graph it and get an idea of it. Um, and then if it's... Uh, piecewise smooth and uh, break it into smooth subsurfaces. So we're going to go over to GeoGebra for this graph. And uh, if it wasn't already obvious, this is a, a sphere centered at the origin radius 2. So there's the full sphere. And then we're going to sort of chop it with the plane z equals 1. Yeah, let's make that. Switch these colors. So the The surface is piecewise smooth, and it consists of two parts. There's this top of the sphere, right, once the thing comes in and chops it off, and we'll call that S1. Um, and then there is the bottom, which is a disk, right? Um, the intersection of the plane Z equals 1 and the sphere. Uh, essentially like the bottom of this little cap thing, and we'll call that S2. All right. So then you want to get parameterizations for your surface or surfaces. Um, since we have two surfaces, uh, we could go through the full process with each one, or we could kind of work them in parallel. Um, and I think I'll go through uh, the full process with S1 and then go back through it a little quicker with S2. So remember S1 is, uh, part of the sphere above the plane z equals 1. Let's see where we might need more room here. That should work. All right, so the parameterization for a sphere is well known, and it comes from the uh, equations we would use to convert between spherical and rectangular coordinates. And so what we typically use, instead of using u and v as the parameters, then we just use phi and theta uh, so we can be more familiar with those formulas. So uh, I remember x is equal to 2 cosine theta sine phi, and y is equal to 2 sine theta sine phi, and z is equal to 2 cosine phi. Uh, and then theta will go between 0 and 2 pi. Now, phi normally ranges from 0 to pi to trace out the full circle. Uh, remember, uh, phi starts at 0, and it's pointed up along the positive z-axis, and then it opens going down, right? And if it went all the way down there, right, that negative z-axis is when it's equal to 
pi, and that would be the full range. Um, but it actually stops short of that here um, because we just want to trace out to here. And so what is that by value? Um, so you want to use the probably a 2D version of this. And remember that this thing goes to from zero to. So this is like a Z axis. And then this could be X or Y. We'll just think of it as X. And then we are chopping it at. right here when z equals one. Okay, and so that's the angle we're after. So uh, let's use the triangle that we have here. So all right, this part right here is one because it's from zero up to z equals zero to z equals one. And then the radius is two, right? Uh, that's the hypotenuse. And then using this right triangle, um, you can solve for that. Uh, it'd be uh, square root of two squared minus one squared or the square root of four minus one or square root of three. So that's square root of three. Uh, from there, you can figure out the angles using basic trig. And so um, you should get that this is pi over three or 60 degrees um, using that one, two, square root of three reference triangle. So that's as far as it's going to go with E from 0 to pi over 3. All right, uh, then we're able to set up our unit tangent vectors. And so we would be... thinking of the components of R as X, Y, and Z, uh, and then taking partial derivatives with respect to our two parameters. Now, we're not using U and V, we're using phi and theta. So we'll get a T phi and a T theta. Oops. So for T phi, we're doing partial derivatives of X, Y, and Z with respect to phi. And so the first component would be the partial derivative of two cosine theta sine phi with respect to phi. So the derivative of the sine phi gives you a cosine phi. Second component, the partial derivative of two sine theta sine phi with respect to phi. Uh, again, we get a cosine phi. Oops. And then the last one is two cosine phi, and so we get a negative two sine phi. All right, now we do partial derivatives with respect to theta of those same components. Uh, so the derivative of two cosine theta sine phi with respect to theta, uh, we get negative two sine theta. And then derivative of two sine theta sine phi with respect to theta, get to cosine theta. And the last component doesn't have a theta, so it's a constant, and so it's derivative. 
too much like theta, is zero. All right, that gives you your uh, unit tangent vectors for the surface. Now we're going to do their cross product to get essentially a normal vector for the surface. All right, so TU cross TV. And the good thing about this setup is that I can kind of take what's here and then think of it like my matrix um, that I'll use in the cross product, right? Where we have I, J, and K here. And so we'll do a cross product of that, or sorry, a determinant of that matrix to get our cross product. So we'll do T V cross T theta. All right, so for the I component, uh, we have two sine theta cosine phi times zero minus negative two sine theta times two cosine the sine theta. So the negative the first part zero, the negatives cancel, and we get four cosine theta sine squared phi. All right, and then for the J component, we've got negative uh, times the difference of two cosine theta cosine phi times zero, which again is zero, minus this. And so the, there's two negatives here we're multiplying, but we're subtracting that. But then there's also a negative out in front of the full difference. So there's four negatives there if you write it all out, um, and four negatives would be a positive. And then it ends up being four sine theta sine squared phi. All right. And then the last one, uh, the k component or z component, um, doesn't have the zero to make it simpler. Um, but we multiply those, we get two cos or four cosine squared cosine phi sine phi. And then here, minus negative four sine squared sine phi. So four cosine squared theta sine phi cosine phi, uh, and then plus four sine squared theta sine phi cosine phi. So you have a four sine squared cosine squared uh, or maybe the better way to think about it is you have four sine phi, cosine phi in both. Let's factor that off. And then what's left is cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one. Um, and so that whole thing is just four sine phi, cosine phi. Once you simplify. All right, in step five, we find the magnitude of that cross product. Um, and that will serve as our Jacobian when we do the integral. So let's do the magnitude of T phi cross T theta. Uh, and so we have the components there. It's just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So four cosine theta sine squared phi squared four sine theta, sine squared phi squared, and then four sine phi, cosine phi squared. All right, so you end up getting 16 cosine squared theta sine to the fourth phi and 16 sine squared theta sine to the fourth phi. So you can actually factor off uh, 16 sine to the fourth phi there, and then you'll have cosine squared plus sine squared just giving you one. So this is all just 16 sine to the fourth of phi. Uh, and then there's not a lot you can do with the last piece. Um, you do get another 16, and so we can 
factor that off and take the square root of it and get a four. And there's a common factor of sine squared phi um, that could also be factored off. And you could take the square root of that. Oh, we do want to do that. All right. So let me see if I can fit this in here. I'm going to have to simplify this. So that ends up being 16 sine to the fourth V. All right, so we'll factor off a 16 and get a four when we take the square root. We'll factor off a sine squared phi and get a sine phi when we take the square root. And then what's left is actually sine squared plus cosine squared for phi. And that's just one. And so this whole thing simplifies to four sine phi. Um, but, you know, that's that's going to be happening anytime you have a sphere. Um, that four is coming from the radius. Uh, and so that four could be different, right? It would be a one for a unit sphere. Um, and in general, that's going to be R squared in front of the sine phi. Um, but if you're just doing a sphere, then centered at the origin, um, then those those parameterizations are all going to be pretty similar. All right, so we're now ready to go to step six. And I got to clear all this out to make room uh, for our double integral. So we need to remember that this is four sine phi, right? And I guess we also want to remember that at the very beginning, we were trying to find the surface integral of z squared ds, right? All right, so the double integral turns into an integral, iterated double integral over the two parameters um, according to this formula here. And so to modify it for what we were doing, um, we need to rewrite the function in terms of those parameters. Uh, and we would use the parameterization for that. All right. So specifically, that third component is z, right? So x, y, and z. We use this assignment of x, y, and z to the three components earlier um, when we found the, the unit tangent vectors. And we'll do that again now. So the z squared uh, part of this, which is this, right? Uh, z squared turns into 2 cosine phi, right, which is z uh, squared. All right, now for the magnitude of tu cross tv, we're going to use our magnitude of t phi cross t theta that we found in step 5, um, and that was for sine phi. Uh, and then our du dv is d phi d theta. So with this, we're going to be, remember, theta went from 0 to 2 pi. And then phi went from 0 to pi over 3. So the inside integral here is for phi, and so that will go from 0 to pi over 3. 
And then the outer integral is for theta, that'll go from zero to two pi. So that's our double integral. Now this is just the one for S1, right? Doing. All right, so simplifying the integrand, uh, we get four cosine squared phi times four sine phi, um, which gives you a 16 that we can put out front. And then cosine squared phi sine phi And we'll do the phi integration first. The antiderivative for phi there would be one third, which we can put out front. Let's do that actually. One third cosine cubed. Why do we need a negative? We do, right? Because the derivative of this would be three times one third, which is one cosine squared phi. And then the chain rule will give you the derivative of cosine phi, which is negative sine phi. So we do need a negative to go out there. So that's our antiderivative. That gets evaluated at zero and pi over three. Uh, and then there's still going to be a, a theta integral to do. Uh, so cosine of pi over 3 is sine of pi over 3. I want to say it's square root of 3 over 2. Let me double check. My calculator just died on me. Need to draw a little triangle here to remind myself. So if that's pi over three. Uh, bigger one. So yeah, then it's is it one half? No, there it's the other way. It'd be one half here. And square root of three over two there. Yeah. All right, so cosine of pi over three should just be one half. Jeez. Yeah, it is. All right, sorry. Uh, still waking up here. All right, and then cosine of zero is one. And so we're able to get negative 16 thirds. Uh, and then it'd be one half cubed minus one cubed. And then you have the integral from zero to two pi of d theta. That's just going to give us a two pi. Um, but yeah, you get one eighth minus one, which is negative seven eighths. There's the two pi from the theta integral. So negative 16 over three, negative seven over eight, and then two pi. <laughs> So negatives cancel, uh, 16 over eight is two, uh, two and two is four, four and seven is 28. So 28 pi over three.
All right, so that is the surface integral on the top part. Now we got to go through the full process for the bottom part, and then we would add those results together uh, to get the total. We'll go a little faster uh, with the second part here. Um, but feel free to fast forward. And so looking back at our, our shape, right, we want the uh, bottom of this, it's just the disk when z equals one, um, you know, look at it, it'd be that, that disc right there. Um, so you can use parameterization for uh, a disc, you just have to adjust for z being equal to one. Uh, I remember that our radius here is uh, square root of three. So you have that, you know, x squared plus y squared is plus three equal to three. You have z equals one. Um, but I think we'll switch to. Uh, polar coordinates and let x be r theta, because this is really r squared is less than theta, or sorry, r squared is less than three, so r is less than square root of three. And so for the parameterization, we'll use uh, u, cosine v, u, sine v, and then one. Right? So the one there is from the z being equal to one. And then the u, that's kind of like our radius r. So u will have to be between zero and three. And you could even use r there if you wanted. And then v, that's like theta. Uh, and that's going to go from zero to two pi. So obviously you want to go from zero to two pi to trace out the full circle, um, but then u is acting like a radius and it only goes out to square root of three. Oh, square root of three, there we go. So that'll be our parameterization for the bottom of this. All right, and we can use these formulas the way they're written because u and v are our parameters. And so we still have that's x and that's y and that's c. And we're now able to take derivatives with respect to u and v to get tu and tv. So partial derivative of u cosine v with respect to u is just the cosine v, u sine v with respect to u is just the sine v, and then one is a constant, so the derivative is zero. Now partial derivatives with respect to v, derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of sine is cosine, and derivative of one is still zero. All right, we're now ready to do our cross product for step four. So think of this as a matrix and do the determinant of that matrix. So for the I components, uh, we've got zero minus zero, and that's just gonna give us zero. The zeros really help us here. Uh, for the J component, zero minus zero again. And then for the k component, that's the non-zero entry, we get cosine v times u cosine v, which is u cosine squared v, minus 
sine v times negative u sine v or plus u sine squared v. So u cosine squared v plus u sine squared v. Uh, and of course, that's just u. So it should make sense that the normal vector, the Kroc product is just pointing in the z direction um, because it is a, a plane z equals one and the normal vector would just be pointing straight up uh, along the positive z axis. Um, the magnitude of this should be obvious that it's u, but let's go ahead and calculate that anyway, tu cross tv. Right. If you have a vector and there's only one non-zero component, then that is the magnitude, that non-zero component. Um, because you'll have zero squared plus zero squared plus that non-zero thing squared. So the magnitude is just u. All right, uh, we're now ready to set up our double integral. But let's not erase all this stuff. It feels like we need that parameterization. So let's save that this time. Uh, and then we want that as well, that magnitude of the cross product. So again, this is the still the integral of z squared ds, but now over s2. And so we're now using that z equals one for that. So this uh, f of u comma v, writing the function z squared in terms of this parameterization, uh, it would just be one, well, one squared, right? And then for the magnitude of the cross product, that's the u, we would get a u there. And then du and dv are du and dv. Uh, this does the inner integral is u, so that'll go from zero to square root of three. And the outer integral is v, it'll go from zero to two pi. So integrating u, right, because one squared is one and that one times u is u, we're just integrating u and so we'll get one half u squared from zero to square root of three. Uh, and that's just gonna be three halves. Then we integrate v, uh, we integrate three halves with respect to v uh, and get three halves v. Evaluating that at zero and two pi, uh, we get three pi. So the twos cancel. So we had uh, 28 pi over three from S1, and then three pi from S2, and not two S, S2. And we would add those together, uh, and that will give me 37 pi over three when I add those together. Um, and that is the value of the full surface integral. All right, so uh, just having two surface, subsurfaces makes this uh, twice as much work, right? But you probably won't have to do that too often. If you have a shape that has a lot of sides, like you're doing a cube or something, um, we have a theorem later on that'll let us uh, avoid that or, or rewrite that in that series of surface integrals. Um, and so that'll come up in later sections um, that for certain surfaces, this is a lot of work and there are some ways around it. Um, for the validation, we're going to use technology, so we'll use some Python code to calculate all this. And I've got some code started here. So uh, you go ahead and define your parameters here. So V and theta are defined. And then here we put the parameterization um, that we use. So it was two cosine theta 
cosine b using uh, sympy sym prefix. And then to sine theta sine phi. Wait, no, that's still cosine phi. And then it's two sine phi here. All right, so that's our parameterization of for S1. So this will be for S1, the part of the sphere above z equals one. Uh, then we have SymPy calculating our. Oh no, we don't. So you could have SymPy calculating those partial derivatives for t phi and t theta. I just have us putting these in here. Um, it's tough to get it to calculate stuff and then put those things into uh, or vectors or matrices and have it work right. But um, so for uh, the unit tangent vectors t phi and t theta. Uh, T phi is two cosine theta cosine phi, and then two sine theta cosine phi. And then negative two sine phi. Right. And then for t theta, negative two sine theta. sine phi to cosine theta sine phi and zero. So this is just the stuff we had figured out when we did this by hand. So you're just typing all this into uh, defining it in Python. Uh, now I do have uh, SymPy, well, I have, I do have this like uh, homemade cross product formula here. Um, there is some built-in cross product stuff, uh, but I, I wasn't getting it to work well with these variables. So, um, but this needs to be changed, right? T phi, T theta, T phi. Data. I guess you could have just leave these as U's and V's. All right, so that's our cross product of T phi cross T theta. Uh, and then you have, have it finding the magnitude of that vector here. Again, another kind of uh, formula that I created here, just using the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. And then here we put in our function in terms of the parameters uh, for times cosine b squared. Right, that was just our um, z squared. Which z should have been cosine phi. So that was a mistake up here. I had these wrong. Those are sine phi's, and then that's cosine phi at the end. All right. And then you 
take F, multiply by your magnitude of your cross product, and then we integrate B from zero to pi over three, and theta from zero. Maybe we can use sim pi for these pi's, zero to two pi. Now, of course, we had some issues here. What is it not like? P X T T norm. Oh, it's the sim pi, the sim dot pi. All right, so there's our 28 pi over three. Uh, that's S1. S2 will be a little easier because we're going to stick with U's and V's. And uh, it was U times cosine V and u times sine v, and then one, and then our tu is cosine v, uh, sine v, and zero, and our tv is negative u, sine v u cosine v and zero. Don't need to change the cross product or the magnitude formulas. Um, and then f is just one squared. Down here, when we integrate u uh, is going from zero to square root of three, and v is going from zero to two pi. We did it again. And we get our three pi, and that validates the analytic hand done work. Same results there, um, showing that we got it right. All right, so that'll do it for surface integrals. Uh, we still have vector surface integrals and a couple more things to do, but we're almost done.